Hello students, let me welcome you to lesson 2 of the series Intermediate English coming to you with the compliments of Kingsway Language Center. I am N.D. Vincent. I hope you appreciated the very first lesson which has had over 230 viewers up to now. That is very encouraging but what is a little disappointing is the number of subscribers. I hope there will be some improvement on this, this time. So I would like to request you kindly to subscribe and press the bell button. Now let us move on to lesson 2. You have seen lessons on tenses displayed on a board. There you see the tenses shown horizontally, the past, present and the future. Then there are the four forms of these tenses, namely simple, continuous, perfect and perfect continuous. These are shown vertically. So for the purpose of our lessons, let's refer to the four forms of tenses as forms. Simple present form, continuous form, perfect form, perfect continuous form. That will be very convenient instead of calling all these tenses and forms of tenses as tenses. We learned some sentences in all forms of tenses in our first lesson. But we did not change the sentences in the perfect and perfect continuous form into passive voice sentences. I am sorry about this, but you can be sure that you will learn perfect and perfect continuous forms many times in the future lessons. In the lesson for today, I will use a basic sentence in simple present tense. The sentence is Dogs bite bones. In this sentence, both the doer of the action and the receiver of the action are plural. This is for the purpose of adding variety to lessons. Wherever possible, I will use plurals that don't end with S or ES, like knives which is the plural of knife. I had touched on simple tenses and continuous tenses in lesson 1. We will do many more in time to come. But let me take this opportunity to teach you perfect and perfect continuous forms of tenses in this lesson. When do we use perfect forms? To make it convenient, I will limit myself to the present tense, under which the perfect and perfect continuous forms come. That is, I will not speak about forms of tenses in the past or future tenses today. We can do that later. I would like to continue this lesson by bringing to your notice that all actions have beginnings, continuing and endings. You can hardly think of actions that don't have all these three features. When you run a race, you start, run and then reach the winning post. When you bathe, you begin by opening the tap, shower yourself with water and then end your bath by using a towel. They all have beginnings, continuing and endings. The only actions that don't have continuing actions are, for instance, lightning. You know that when it rains, lightning splashes on the sky. It's just a matter of a split second in which the lightning happens. 
um, there is no continuation in it. Another example is when you walk on the street, you tread on a banana peel or a plant and skin as most of us call it. You slip and you fall. In these, the action can begin and end, but not continue. That's because when you slip, you fall immediately and rise almost immediately thereafter. There is no time for anything to continue in between. All the other actions have all three features, beginning, continuing and ending. If in sentences all three features are there, why are forms of tenses there? A good question. They are there for you to choose one or two of these forms of tenses depending on what you want to say. When you say I am reading a book, you only say that you are continuing to read the book, not when you started it or when you plan to finish it. Similarly, if you want to say that you started writing a letter and are still writing it, you have to say it in the perfect continuous form. I have been writing a letter. That shows that you started writing a letter and are continuing to write it. Here, you didn't use all three forms, used only two of them. It's only when you say, I have been writing a letter since yesterday and I will finish it tomorrow, that you will be able to show that you are using all three. That is, the action began, the action continues, and it will end. For the purpose of our studies, we will limit our discussion to only one or two forms, not all three of them. The perfect and perfect continuous forms of these tenses are the most difficult for our students to understand. I'll try to make it easy for you. You just learnt that all actions have beginnings, continuing and endings. In perfect form of tense, the arrangement of these forms are a little different. You have to remember that the continuation of the action is of short duration. Then it ends and then begins the effect of the action showing itself. The word perfect means complete. When you do something successfully, you look at the result and say perfect. When you are given a form to fill, you are asked to complete it or perfect it. They both mean the same. But in this instance, they have permitted us to show a completed action first and a result of that action later. I'll give you some examples of that. I'll give you a very good example of someone applying perfume. A lady dresses up and sprays perfume as the final act. The act begins at the time she opens the bottle of perfume. That's the beginning. Then she sprays it on her body. That's the continuing. Then the action ends when she puts back the lid. What begins then? She begins to smell sweet and that will last till the evening. Applying perfume is the act and the fragrance of that perfume is the result of that act. Then let's imagine that you are facing a job interview. What do you say there? I learnt English or I have learnt English. If you say I learnt English, what you will really say is, I learnt English some months or years ago and I don't remember much of it. But on the other hand, if you say, I have learnt English, the one who interviews you will know that you continue to learn English for some time 
and ended it and the effect of the, of the result of your learning is still with you. You can speak and write English. That is, you finished your action of learning sometime earlier, but the effects of your action are still there. You still remember what you learned. Another example. A friend comes home at one o'clock in the afternoon and invites you to lunch with him. What do you say to him? I hate or I have eaten. Your answer must be I have eaten because though you finished your action of eating at 12 noon that day, the effects of that action are still there. Your stomach is full and you are not hungry and therefore you cannot go with him for lunch. Your stomach being full and you are not feeling hungry, one o'clock are the effects of your action of eating at twelve noon. So you know what the effects of an action means. You say to the person listening to you that after ending an action, the effects continue. Do you realize that I have just taught you a perfect form of tense? I started teaching you a few minutes ago only for a short time. It continued up to now and it ended just now. And what is the result or the effect of my teaching? You are going to remember the lesson forever. You will use the perfect form whenever you have to or whenever you want to. I do hope that will happen. Oh, I must bring back the, the topic of perfume to teach something important. Perfumes can be used, applied or worn. Worn is the past participle of wear. Wear, wo and worn. Do you wear perfume? Yes, you certainly do. When you dress up to go out, you wear nice clothes and as the last act, you wear, apply or spray perfume. So it's a part of your dressing and you can certainly call it wearing perfume. If you say you use perfume, then it is a habit. So that belongs to the simple present form. You apply perfume especially if it is in the form of a cream. Otherwise you wear perfume. Please remember this. But in your mother tongue you might say put perfume. That is very wrong. In English it's not correct at all. Now for the perfect continuous form. It will be an action beginning and then continuing. There is something unusual here. We learn that perfect is a completed action. So when you speak about perfect continuous, you would expect an action completing first. That's perfect. And then continuing. That's continuous. But when you say a sentence like, I have been reading a book, in the perfect continuous form, you are really speaking about beginning of an action first and continuing action second and no mention of completed action to say anything about perfect. This will be a little confusing for students. About continuing an action first and only then the end. Only in sentences like the one I am going to show you now you will really find the perfect, that is the completion, and the continuous actions taking place one after the other. In these sentences, the reasons are given for what appear in the first part of the sentences. I have underlined the first part of the sentences. The first sentence is, My back aches as I have been working very hard. The second sentence is, the children are ready for the exam 
as they have been studying hard. The third sentence, the paddy is ripe for harvest, just as the farmers have been hoping. Once you do exercises using about 10 sentences in present, continuous, perfect and perfect continuous forms, you will get the hang of it, I am sure. So keep repeating and by the time you have followed about 10 lessons, you will realize that your speech is coming to you naturally. How do you speak and write? 1. Perfect form and 2. Perfect continuous forms in sentences. Difficult? That won't be difficult if you remember these. The perfect form has a short continuation. The perfect continuous form has a long continuation. The perfect form is spoken with have and we and ed. You must remember the irregular verbs don't end with ed but with a different word. The perfect continuous form is spoken with have been verb which is associated with ing verb plus ing use the shorter form of these to italicize keys to the one with short continuation past participles ending with ed or irregular verbs i hope you have been able to follow this lesson so far without any difficulty now let us proceed to say the following sentences for the purpose of getting used to various forms of saying sentences. Remember all these are in the present tense. Dogs bite bones. Negative sentence will be dogs don't bite bones. Then dogs are biting bones that is in the continuous form. Dogs aren't biting bones. Dogs have bitten bones. Dogs haven't bitten bones. Dogs have been biting bones. Dogs haven't been biting bones. I don't have to say in the margin what forms of tenses these, these sentences belong to because you are already familiar with them. Then let me change these two Questions. Do dogs bite bones? Negative sentence. Don't dogs bite bones? Are dogs biting bones? Negative question. Aren't dogs biting bones? Have dogs bitten bones? Haven't dogs bitten bones? Have dogs been biting bones? Haven't dogs been biting bones? These sentences are in present tense in all forms with positive and negative modes. They include questions also. Future lessons will be in the past and future tenses. I will also presenting them to you in passive voice. Constant repetition of sentences like these will make your English speech and writing perfect. So best of luck. Now I will give you some idioms with the words bite. Use them in your speech and writing. What's biting you? That's the question you ask when you have to say what's wrong with you. Now, when a person annoys you, you ask or you tell that person what's wrong with you. Instead of saying that, you can ask him what's biting you. Bite of more than one can chew. This is said when one takes over more work than one can easily handle. 
This generally happens in offices. Officers ask and take home work. That is, work more than what they can handle in their offices. Finally, they are unable to do their work and the bosses complain. So, that person has bitten off more than what he could possibly chew. Bite one stung. I have put the word once in within brackets because you can change that, that word into whatever you like. One bite my tongue. Yes, that's that's common. I'll bite my tongue. What, what I mean by I'll bite my tongue, I want to say something, but I'll rather not say it. Uh, I'll make a great effort not to say what I feel like saying. Um, the, there's an example. Uh, somebody asks another, I hear you have been copying at the exam. The person who replies gets angry and says, No, I'll bite my tongue. In other words, he is saying, No, I feel like saying something to you, but I won't say it. Bite the hand that feeds one. By one, mean I mean a person. You can put in whatever the name of the person. The, the meaning is to harm someone who has helped. That's the meaning. At this stage, I want to give you the answers to the questions contained in Lesson 1. The questions go as, as this. Fill in the blanks with the most suitable word or phrase. The first question is, there you can see him. He blanks his car fast. The options given are driving, was driving, is driving. What would your answer be? Your answer will be is driving because the person or the persons who sees another person driving are seeing them now, not later. That's why they say, there, you can see. So, it must be in present continuous. There, you can see him. He is driving his car fast. Sentence number two. He always blank his hair with a parting in the middle. The options are was combing, will be combing, combs. Now, clearly this sentence speaks about a habit. You know that men always, or for, for a good part of their lives, have the same hairstyle. If a person parts his hair in the middle as his way of combing a hair, that's his habit. He does it always. So when something happens to be a habit with a person, it must be in simple present. So combs is the correct answer. He always combs his hair with a parting in the middle. Sentence number three. The children blank their lunch now they can go home now they what does this mean somebody telling another the children have had their lunch therefore they can go home that means uh, well the options are are having are being had have had they can't go home while they are having their lunch so that's not the answer. Are being had refers to an action in a passive voice. Here the children are eating themselves. Nobody is feeding them. So the correct answer is the children have had their lunch. Now they can go home. Now you can read two 
sentence, two words here, have and had. The first have refers to the have necessary to complete this sentence in the perfect form of the present tense. The second had relates to the fact that they have had lunch. Sentence number four. We blank since morning. We are traveling, have been traveling, have traveled since morning. These persons have started traveling since morning and therefore the word since indicates the beginning of their journey. If they are still traveling, their travel continues and therefore a continuous word must appear here. Since they have been traveling from morning, the correct answer will be have been traveling, not are traveling, which is happening now, or have traveled. In fact, their travel is not complete. Question number five. He blank daily in the mornings. This is also a habit. So, the simple present is the correct answer. He exercises daily in the mornings. In this exercise, all options might appear to be correct. But in addition to the grammar involved, what you must look for is what the speaker really means and your answer must be according to that. At this stage, I want to give you the test for next week. The sentences here will help you to improve your sentence skills. You could send your answers to me by email for review. The address is Kingsway Language Center at gmail.com. But it is but it is important that you subscribe to the channel and show at the top the exact time you subscribed. You may also include any questions on the subject of English language. I'll give you the best possible answer. You could also obtain a printed summary of this lesson if you make a request. Mention in your email the exact time you subscribe to this channel. Then the exercise for the week are here. The first exercise is done for you. Insert the words or phrases given in A and in B and make meaningful sentences. In other words, you see some words and phrases in A here and parts of a sentence in B. What I am requiring you to do is to insert what appears in A, in B, and make meaningful sentences. I hope you'll understand. I've given you an example. In the first question, in A, I give you the words and phrases, had been, since last year, has become. Where you must insert is appearing in B. Living in the USA, an enjoyable experience. But with COVID spreading, traveling there, difficult. So if you insert the words and phrases appearing in A in the correct places, the sentence would read like, living in the USA had been an enjoyable experience, but since last year, with COVID spreading, traveling there has become difficult. So... Proceed to do the second, third, fourth and fifth and also the sixth and send me your answers 
by email. I will review those answers and if any ex explanation is necessary, I will be happy to provide them. I will come to the end of today's lesson with a request to you to please subscribe and press the bell button. This will encourage me greatly. You know, in a classroom there are children who actively listen to my teaching. The classroom is alive. But I have to do these recordings in closed rooms with even the fan switched off to avoid noise. All these take effort. The only way you can show your appreciation is by subscribing. So please do it. Listen to this passage. This dog always bites bones, but it hasn't bitten a bone today. As I haven't been buying bones recently, he would be biting a bone when I do buy bones. Would you like to say sentences like this? Then follow my lessons. Thank you. I look forward to see you in lesson 3. Bye for now. Thank you.